Hello everyone, I'm Jake, your friendly antkeeper and biologist. Welcome to the channel. So, today, we're going into the greater beyond. Ants in space. Welcome to the My Living Worlds Ants channel. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Space, the great emptiness which is full of so much that we don't understand. Countless space missions have occurred, and still are happening. The first animal sent out to orbit the Earth was a dog named Laika aboard the Soviet spacecraft Sputnik 2 in 1957. There were countless other animals sent out, like chimpanzees and mice, but unfortunately, many of these animals did not survive re-entry. After years of sending out animals, the first human space mission occurred in 1961, after the well-known space race between Russia and USA. The Soviets came out on top. I know, I know, enough of the history, let's get on to the ants. In 2014, a Stanford biologist, Deborah Gordon, led a space program to study the behaviour of ants in space. Hopefully, I'll be speaking with her very soon, and an interview video will be uploaded. How cool is that? Actual ants in space. This mission was set out to understand how ants react differently with Earth gravity and microgravity. Microgravity, sometimes known as zero gravity, is when an object or living thing appears weightless and simply floats in space. So, what was the purpose of this research? Well, looking at how ants work together can teach us many valuable lessons, but their teamwork was really put to the test when adding in the factor of microgravity. These several hundred ants had gone where no ant had boldly gone before, to the International Space Station. Well, believe it or not, this was not the first time ants had been sent into space. In 2003, a group of harvester ants were sent out to space from the Kennedy Space Center. However, these ants did not actually enter the International Space Station, they were just aboard the shuttle. Fun fact time, in 1994, a Simpsons episode was released called Deep Space Homer, where an experiment with ants in space was carried out, and of course, Homer Simpson crashed into the ant nest, causing disaster. Right, back to the 2014 mission. Roughly 600 black pavement ants were taken to the International Space Station, where they could conduct their experiment. Ant colonies constantly monitor their environment, whether it's to find food, or defend their nests. Ants have a well-known scouting method of sending out ants in small groups, and this can greatly vary depending on ant species. With a combination of chemical signals, pheromones, and communication through vibrating frequencies, the majority of ants have no need for sight. So, the big question is, how can ants still function if their usual information is taken away? On Earth, ants constantly collide passing information but with microgravity, the ants struggle to walk as they get pulled away from the surface they walk on. With these ants less frequently bumping into each other, they seem to struggle to communicate information to each other. The experiment consisted of eight habitats, with roughly 80 ants per container, and the key focus of this experiment being expandable search networks. This is how ants communicate specific information from one location to another. When these ants were placed in microgravity, this changed how the ants could communicate, meaning these ants would have to adapt, and believe it or not, they did. The same experiment was carried out on Earth, to have comparable results of both Earth and microgravity. The whole idea of this experiment was that as more chambers were opened up to the ants, they had more surface area to cover. But with the microgravity affecting the density of ants in one area, it made it harder for the ants to establish where they were going and where they'd been. The ants in Earth gravity quickly established pathways into new chambers and covered more surface area than the ants in space. Although the ants in microgravity did struggle to establish paths because they kept floating away, they did, however, manage to quickly regain hold of the surface. The average ant in microgravity spent two to eight seconds floating before regaining control. Not only did the microgravity affect the ants communicating, but it also affected their ability to develop pathways, and, in some ways, 
these flying sprees could have disorientated the ants. The data recorded showed that overall, the ants in microgravity were less effective in their searching abilities. Some ants hardly reached or never reached some corners of the arenas, whereas in the earth control experiment, many more ants had reached those points. Although the ants tumbled and turned from one side of the container to another, and were less effective in space, they did however do something very noticeable. The pavement ants in microgravity paid particular attention to the task of exerting pressure whilst connected to a surface, meaning these ants were forcibly holding on tighter than they usually would on Earth. What this means is that these ants were able to adjust to an environment they'd never faced before and still knew what they needed to do. They actually learned to maximize their force by being ready to cling on to any surface or fellow worker ant, after they'd regained control, they flattened their bodies against the surface to stay attached. Understanding how ants can adapt to any situation very quickly may be down to over 150 million years of evolution. And the strategies and learning that ants use could be applied to the future of technology to help solve many problems we might face. Less than 24 hours ago, Elon Musk's SpaceX program shipped out ants, avocados, and human-sized robotic arms, which were blasted off towards the International Space Station. We've now come to the end of this video. I really hope that you all enjoyed it, and I had so much fun making this one. I'd really appreciate your support if you could subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like, and comment on your favourite part of this video. Thank you so much for watching, if you're still here. See you in the next video.